It's time to step into the Coming Out Lounge, a cool, safe space to be true to your sexual self. With your host, Rick Clemens. Rick has helped hundreds of people come out of the closet, and now each week he's bringing you cool insights for loving and accepting yourself, boosting your self-confidence, and living a guilt-free, purpose-filled life on the other side of the closet doors. Cuddle up with yourself and get ready for heartwarming coming out stories, ideas for living authentically, and tips for being fully self-expressed. Now here's your host, Coming Out Coach Rick. Hey, 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 closet dwellers and closet busters. It is time once again for one of the final episodes of the Coming Out Lounge before we transition to life uncloseted. And I just want you for a minute to think about doing something that you want to do. It could be coming out of the closet. It could be leaving your job. It could be starting to date someone that maybe isn't what everybody else thinks would be a good person for you to date. And you're doing that all in a foreign country. You're trying to manage the language barriers, maybe some of the cultural stuff. And for most of us, that would probably really intimidate the hell out of us. But I can tell you this, for today's guest, he went through a pretty big shift in his life in a foreign country, which actually for him ended up being probably the catalyst of some of the ease that helped him get to where he's going today. He's Definitely a guy with a lot of interesting interests. He's done some cool stuff in his life, and he's got a great, great blog that I've been following for a little while here. It's called Create Good Mornings. His name is Craig Kulik. I just, I really wanted him on the podcast, especially in these final days before we do the switch over to Life on Closet, because he's got a coming out story that really solidifies my belief in what many of you have heard me talk about is once we come out in one way, we can come out in many other ways. And we're going to go some places with Craig today that may really show you some insights for how coming out can be something you can overlay into so many other aspects of your life. So instead of listening to me talk all the time, let's go ahead and bring Craig onto the show. Welcome to the show, Craig. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. So Let's just, I don't know, you know, let's talk a little bit about where you are right now. You're working for an organization in Canada. I'll let you talk a little bit about that. But you also kind of have this side gig, side hustle, side project called Create Good Morning. So why don't you talk a little about where you are, and then we'll go back into the history of how you got here. How's that sound? Sounds great. Bring us up to speed, man. You're doing what right now these days? Sure. So I have a job that most people laugh at when I tell them what my job is. So I'll preface it that way. So everybody I, get ready with your big laughs because he's going to reveal it and then we all laugh on the air here, okay? <laughs> all right. So I do marketing for the largest ultimate Frisbee league in the world. Oh, that's awesome, man. It's pretty cool. I live in Vancouver mm-hmm. and we've got about 5,300 members in our league. And we have three full-time staff, me being, of course, one of them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do full-time. And then, as you mentioned, on the side, I have my blog. It's called Create Good Mornings, which is really about how do you make the most of the first half of your day in terms of you wake up, what are you deciding to do that's going to get you to where you want to get to in the future to reach your goals? But also, how are you living in a way that you're fully present and enjoying today? Because today is really the only guarantee of what we have. Mm -hmm. And so how I got to the blog about mornings is that through my job at the Vancouver Ultimate League, which I started five and a half years ago, I have been working from home ever since. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I realized quite quickly when I started the job is that if I didn't make the most of my morning, my day would slip away. I'd work late into the evening and then I wouldn't really have time to get done things that I wanted to do for myself things that were going to help me grow personally, or even just things like I wanted to floss my teeth and I'd just be lazy at night and wouldn't do it. Uh So as you started to develop this create good mornings thing, what was the real driver? I mean, what was, you know, a lot of us get these ideas and we say, Oh, we're going to do this. And then we start, but what's the impetus for continuing? What, what keeps you going and what keeps you motivated? Well, I'll answer that question. And, and break it down into two parts. There's starting with the morning routines, which helped me get to where I am right now. But then there's also starting the blog about about mornings, which is a much less linear sort of a path. So the mornings I started, as I mentioned, as a way to just 
find some space and time for myself in the morning and develop myself personally, be more productive with my work. And that was something that just became quite natural. Once I invested into doing something in the morning and realized that I was getting results from it, Mm -hmm. it made sense to continue to do more and experiment and figure out how I can uh, optimize my mornings. Absolutely. So blog. Yeah. Real quick before we move to the blog. So this morning routine, it sounds like it was like a, in its own way, a coming out journey to making a shift in life. That's like, if I really want to be accomplishing things and getting somewhere, I've got to open up to and come out to the fact that something's not working. That's what I just heard you say. Yeah. And you've actually just reminded me of a really important point is one of the reasons why I started to invest in mornings and wanted to make those personal changes was that a relationship had just ended and Mm. I was kind of in this place of self-reflection, self-discovery and wanted to make some changes. I, you know, through the relationship learned parts of myself that I could see that I didn't like and I wanted to change. And so, you know, the, the changes that I mentioned of, Flossing, for example, is not mm-hmm. obviously a change that was looking to do that, but it was the first step in what I knew could be a series of changes. And not too long after flossing, or maybe even at the same time, it's hard to remember because it was so many years ago, but I started meditating. Mm-hmm. And that has been a game changer. Wow. Amazing. And so the meditation, what do you feel like you've mostly gotten from that practice? The biggest thing I'd say is self-awareness that I can see when I'm getting into an emotional state or a mind state or reacting to something. Mm -hmm. Whereas before I would just get lost in those ups and downs and the emotions, I was very much a a person of highs and lows. I'd be the most happy and excited person you have ever met at times when things were going really well. And when things weren't going well, I was crushed and visibly sad and depressed. Mm -hmm. So you started to get this, what I'm hearing, this space of self-awareness and really getting yourself and realizing these habits and everything were starting to have an impact on your life. So is that when the idea for the blog came into play or was that something that came in from a completely different angle? A bit of both. Knew that I wanted to do something in the online space. Mm-hmm. And I had tried a few blogs in the past just on my own, writing them without even telling anyone about them. I realized that the content that I was writing about was not something I was that excited about. Mm-hmm. So I put those to rest. And then I just started writing down ideas of things that I wanted to write about, things that I was learning about myself. And I did that for probably a year, year and a half. At the end, I had this long list of ideas, and I was trying to figure out what's the connection? Mm. How can I make this into one cohesive blog? And I couldn't see it, to be honest. It was more along the lines of how to live a good life, which seemed a lot too broad or way too broad. Mm. Mm. I ended up going to a a meetup called Live Your Legend here in Vancouver. It's a, a website that has quite the story behind that. And there's several hundred thousand people that follow that website, but they had these local meetups. So I went to a a local live your legend meetup Mm -hmm. and met someone there who was a coach. And uh, we went out for coffee not too long after that. Wasn't planning to work with him at all, but he convinced me after that coffee and we sat down, had a four hour session. And from that came up with the idea of a blog about mornings. And, And when we came up with that idea and I reflected on it, I realized, yeah, that's actually the foundation. That's what connects all of these topics Mm of awareness and intention, meditation and mindfulness, productivity, work routines, goal setting, those types of things. Mm. That's amazing. You know, as you're talking about this, Craig, one of the pieces I'm starting to pull together, which I think ties back to the pre-story of, you know, what really went on for you when you were in Korea is as we start to see these things happen in our lives, it's a repeating in this genre coming out story. There's like, oh, okay, now I understand why all these pieces fit together. You know, what I just heard you say there was 
suddenly these things started to come together, which really started from this idea of I've got to break out. I've got to find something that inspires me to do something different. And then suddenly we may not know exactly why something is happening, but then when the ducks line up, so to speak, like you just said, then it goes, oh, there's the aha. It's like, now I understand why it was so important for me to go do this. So as you saw the importance of, you know, the whole creating the blog and everything, what was something that you personally felt this could have an impact on other people's lives by creating the Create Good Mornings blog? Hmm. That's a good question. Or maybe you didn't. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm one of those people that there's been several things I've started that I only started just for my own edification, not necessarily to help somebody else. And then suddenly the next thing I know is actually helping other people. And then as I shared it, more people are like, Oh, that's pretty cool. I'd like to learn more. So maybe that's the space you went into as well. Yeah. I mean, it's actually a, a bit of both. One thing I love about writing on the blog is that it's very much a positive feedback loop in that mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot. It's motivating me to learn more. I'm implementing that into my life. And then I'm, writing that, which is causing me to frame it in a way of how do you teach this to someone else? Mm -hmm. And that compounds the learning for me. So the piece of what I want to share and what I want people to learn is very much exactly what I want to learn and what I struggle with. And I feel like I'm slowly chipping away at it, but mm -hmm. it's an endless journey, I'm sure. And that's very much about how do we live a life that is present and fulfilling right now at the same time as doing the things to get to the destination that we want to get to in the future? Or how do we craft this life that we ultimately want to live so that when we are facing our death, if we have that moment to actually take stock and think of our lives, you know, how do we live our lives? Did we live it in a way that we truly wanted to live it? So getting to that space is really similar to the coming out process. I think it's part of how do we live our life in the most powerful way. And so as, you know, we come out of our closet as gay men, I think that sometimes we think, okay, that's it, that's done. But what we don't realize is this is this the beginning of something. It's going to be something very fulfilling for our lives and showing up in our lives in a very honest, authentic way. And then we think, well, okay, we've done that, but then the next step really is this is going to begin to present itself over and over again. So let's kind of now roll back a little bit to when you were in Korea and when this whole coming out journey happened for you, which I alluded to in the introduction that for some people being in a foreign country coming out could be a really scary thing because you're not really surrounded by you know people, but it could also be a really positive thing. So why don't you share a little bit of that with us? Because I think your story is a little bit different where most people go, it scares the crap out of me to try to go do this somewhere else. Hmm. Yeah, for me, it was definitely what made it easier. I wouldn't say it was easy for me. I struggled a lot when I was in Canada and started to have thoughts of, oh, am I interested in guys more than I'm interested in girls? Right. Because at the time I was dating women and fully in my mind thought that I was straight or at least not straight but maybe I was bi and mm -hmm. I would be able to pass for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Korea I started to have just the urges and desires to be with a guy enough mm -hmm. that it just it drove me to a place where I said to myself I have to do this. Mm -hmm. The urge is too strong and at the same time my interest in women was weakening. So I got to a place where I remember sitting in my kitchen in Korea and just thinking that, oh man, I have to do this. Like there's just mm -hmm. no other option. And I hadn't told anyone yet, but not too long after that, I told one of my friends who was an ultimate Frisbee player. I had just started playing ultimate Frisbee in, in Seoul. And that was around 2005. Mm -hmm. And we went to a gay bar together you know, a week, a month, I can't remember the time gap, but not too mm -hmm. long after that, I met someone yeah, that night, we went home together. Mm -hmm. And it was great, but it was also the worst thing ever I felt. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, no, it's true. Like, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that. 
and I don't really want to be gay. But that started the process of going on the path and slowly, you know, chipping away at my yeah. own perceptions that I had of what that meant and yeah. what life that meant that I was going to live. And uh, I know you've talked about this. It's, it's a continual process. It doesn't end. It's not over yet, but I'm mm -hmm. definitely so much further ahead than I was 13, 14 years ago. Yeah. And to kind of loop this back, this is very much around about what this, my blog is about. It's the same sort of concept that, you know, every day we wake up, it's a new day. We have a new opportunity mm -hmm. to think about what we're doing, how we're living our lives and what baby steps we can take that day to move forward, to become more aware. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, you said, I didn't want to be gay. What was behind that for you, man? I think it was a fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I didn't always fit in. And that was something that was really important to me. I wanted people to like me, something that I still have ingrained in me and still have insecurities about, which makes me fearful of, you know, doing things like this, being on the podcast, right. coming on to it. I told you I was a bit nervous mm -hmm. because I still do have that fear that's inside of me. I can have the awareness to recognize that it's there, but I want people to like me. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, if I come out, I might lose some people. And what does that mean? What, what are my relationships going to be like? What's my family going to think about this? Mm -hmm. And what did you discover? Now, I'm really happy that I'm gay. It's, I mean, it's opened me up to this level of self-acceptance and I think acceptance of other people that maybe I would have gotten to. Otherwise, it's hard to say. You can't really compare, but I mean, it's definitely expedited that process for me. Mm -hmm. And I found that 99% of the people that were in my life accepted me and it hasn't been an mm -hmm. issue at all. I'm really glad you brought that up. And that's why I asked the question is because I think so many people just say they don't, they don't want this. And a lot of it comes from the fear of rejection. It's a lot of it comes from that space of, Oh, I'm not going to be accepted by my family, my friends, whatever it may be. Or there's also the fear of, I don't even know what this really looks like or feels like for me. And I can say from my own perspective, and I'm, I'm going to ask you too, that, you know, it's an evolving thing. It's ever evolving. I mean, even now, whatever it's been almost for me, 20 years later that I've been out, every day is an evolving experience of being out. Every day is an opportunity to come out. As she said, even this podcast, there's days when I do you know, record these podcasts that something shows up that I've never shared, you know? And so suddenly there it is. It's another day of evolving. So for you as that process happened and then you became comfortable was it harder to come back into the states as a gay man having left as quote a heterosexual guy or was it a pretty easy transition back well it was a a long transition i would say mm -hmm. i came back i'm canadian so i came back home right several times when i was living in korea mm -hmm. I came back i think three or four times in those five years and each time i'd come back I would tell another one or two people that was close to me so just for for frame because I'm glad you caught the that I said the states I forgot you know we're talking Canada here so time frame wise where was Canada in their acceptance of you know the whole gay marriage thing and everything was this pre their acceptance of this or where was it gay marriage was legal quite early I think we were the right. third country in the world and right. I believe it was 2004 but okay. this was after that Okay, so so you were actually somewhat coming back into an basically an environment that was pretty open and embracing and welcoming, so to speak, on societal front, at least looking from the outside in. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that when those laws are changed, it doesn't necessarily mean that the acceptance oh, yeah. is with them. <laughs> exactly. And you know that. So yep, yep. that maybe had some impact on my psyche of like, oh, it's like gay marriage is legal here. That's an advancement in mm -hmm. gay rights. But... To be honest, I didn't really think of that that much. It was more about, you know, my sphere and the people that are around me and what are they going to think? Because mm -hmm. that's tangibly 
how I'm going to feel it in my life. Mm -hmm. I love that you just use the word tangibly because I think sometimes we, we think in the intangible realms about this whole journey, whether it's coming out or whether it's about starting a blog or whatever, we get stuck in the intangibles instead of going, okay, what are the tangible things I know? What are the things I know? Now I realize we don't know how our families are going to respond or anything, but if we start to step into the tangible thing of nobody's going to ever accept me, that's very intangible. We, why would we even worry about nobody? Let's be concerned about the tangible people. Will my parents, will my best friend, will my brother, will my sister? That's the tangible realm to play. And even though we don't have the certainty, even in that realm, I think sometimes we get so overwhelmed by thinking the big picture stuff and then, we create our own just slip slippery slope that it's like, okay, forget it. I can't do this because it's just too overwhelming. And I think that was a beautiful way that you put it, that it's got to be something that's really tangible in order for us to move it forward. Absolutely. And I I think what you said too, just that thinking of it in terms of one person at a time, Mm -hmm. because it is a gradual process. You don't just, Mm -hmm. I mean, most people don't just announce it to the whole world and everyone knows for Mm -hmm. most people it's, bit by bit and you tell the people that you feel safest telling at that time right and then you get a reaction which is usually positive because you're telling them because you feel safe around them and you move forward and it slowly helps you to evolve your own acceptance of yourself mm-hmm. so i'm curious for you do you feel like this coming out was one of the either the biggest vulnerable moment in your life to date or was it one of the biggest ones for you that's a really good question Oh, well, and that's why I'd like to ask one of the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. Because some people see it as like their biggest and then others like, oh, it's one of the biggest. It's definitely like in the top five, you know? Yeah, it's, it's up there for sure. It's Mm -hmm. a huge part of my life, obviously. Now I think I'm at the place where I don't have to think about that very much. So that's kind of why your question threw me off. I'd say present day where I'm, challenging my own vulnerability is around the blog and what I'm putting on the blog and what I'm sharing in the world. I'm not usually the kind of person that shares a lot on social media or Facebook, things like mm-hmm. that, at least personally. All right. And that's been a big shift for me because when I started writing the blog, I didn't actually want to talk too much about myself. All right. What I found out pretty quickly is that's what people resonated with mm-hmm. is some of my personal experiences and stories. So I've come out and and shared some very personal stories that I have no intention of doing it, uh, mainly just for the reason that I want those stories to have an impact on someone else and change them in a way that I can help them move forward if that can happen, which is exactly what the reason why I wanted to talk with you on this podcast, Mm -hmm. because I think someone listening can hear this conversation and that can help them move a little bit forward. Mm-hmm. Where they need to oh, absolutely. To. And I think the vulnerability piece is huge, you know, without minimalizing it, you know, it sounds like the coming out piece was definitely something that puts you in a very vulnerable place. But what I love about our journeys, when we do come out, if we tap it in the right way and we leverage our coming out experience, then when we get ready to come out and be more open and vulnerable and share personal things on a blog, We've kind of done it to some degree, and so our coming out journey helps us get more comfortable. doesn't mean it takes away anything that we're doing now. I mean, each each and every time I get on this podcast, I don't know where we're going, and I know there may hit some points that we're going to be really vulnerable, and I know we've been a little bit vulnerable here today, but if we hadn't been through the coming out process, then we'd still be riding those training wheels trying to figure this out, and this is what I think is, I don't want to say that those of us that come out in our LGBTQ life um, per se have the upper hand, but I do think there is a little bit of advantage because we learn to allow the vulnerability to open up that doorway opens up, obviously to be in a space where the, the decision, not the choice, but the decision to let people see the real us is probably one of the scariest, most vulnerable places I know I've ever been only because it's such a, it has been such a societal, you know, taboo to be this. So what lessons have you learned from your own coming out journey that are actually, and I know this may be like one year ago, hmm, I need to think about that, Rick, but have helped you in this coming out and being the blogger and opening the doorways to vulnerability? 
I think a lot of it touches on what you said that having gone through the process of coming out Mm -hmm. and being open in a way that made me extremely uncomfortable. Like I said earlier, I didn't want to be gay. Mm -hmm. That was a a lot of my mindset for the years that I was struggling with it. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, I'd say there's a shortcut to that and that I feel like I can face fears and just go through with them with the fear because I know that life is short and life can end mm-hmm. at any time. Mm-hmm. And if I don't do it now, then I may never do it. Mm. It sounds like that really is a motivator for you. Yes. Yeah. It is. I, I don't know how much you've read on my blog, but both my parents have passed away. Right. And my dad passed away two years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's very much a motivator. They both were quite young. My mom was 53. My dad was 68. Mm. And so I don't have this expectation that I'm going to live till I'm 80. Mm-hmm. And I think this is one of those things, you know, I'm glad you said this, Craig, because a couple of days ago I was working with a client and, you know, as a coach, I will, I will pull these kind of questions from time to time on a client. But I said to him, okay, but if, if you knew that you only had that limited time left on the planet, would you come out of the closet today? Hmm. It was a very interesting answer that I got from him. He said, I'm not sure that that would even make a difference then at that point. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he goes, I think I would just live my life as a gay man and not really come out. And I thought it was so interesting that he answered it that way because it's almost like he's, what he was getting at was I would just, assume a gay lifestyle, quote unquote, lifestyle, and live as if I've already been doing that. I said, so then what is the difference between that and now choosing to do that without feeling like I've only got so much time to live? And his response kind of floored me. He said, because I have a safety net. I said, what do you mean by a safety net? He goes, well, in my own mind, I have a safety net. I know, and I probably got another 20, 30 years to go. And I thought that was just a really interesting perspective that if he had a few days, he'd just go do it. But because he feels like he has a good safety net of 20, 30 years to go, he's not quite as much in a rush. It was just an interesting perspective. Needless to say, we got to a different space by the end of, <laughs> end of the conversation. What would you say is something that on a daily basis really helps you keep the morning, you know, create the morning good mornings blog going and taps your own inner vulnerabilities to go, Oh man, I'm here. I am again. I'm going to put this out there. What is it that really is that inspiration? I think we've touched on a lot of it here. The inspiration is that I very much feel like I don't know how long I'm going to live and that Mm -hmm. could anything could happen at any time. And if I don't show up, today and do the work and put something out there then it might never get out there Mm. so what i'm hearing is you're kind of like the person who says i don't want to die with the song still in me absolutely that Mm -hmm. quote resonates quite strongly with me yeah and i think so many of us miss that piece whether it's the song or that thought or that book or that truth of who we are if we die with that still in us did we actually really live the life we were meant to live and did people really know the person we really were? And that's a huge, huge concept to kind of think through. Um, I think a lot of people get hung up and then they don't do anything, which can be a thing that freezes a lot of people up too. So when we started talking about you coming on the podcast, you said you, you really wanted to do this because you, you felt kind of vulnerable and everything about coming and doing something like this. So what were you most vulnerable about or scared about doing by being on the podcast? I didn't think you were going to go there, Rick. <laughs> I didn't either, but I thought, you know, this feels kind of good. It feels kind All of right. good. Let's just go there and see. I mean, so maybe I can help. I can tell you that when I first got the opportunity to do this, when it was a radio show before it became a podcast, I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Who am I? And why would I do this? And I also know that I'm very much a truth teller for the most part, which is so interesting because in my prior life, I was not a truth teller. 
And I think that was the piece that scared me is I knew that in these moments and there's moments that happen all the time that I will say something on the podcast that maybe I haven't said before. And I know for me, it sets me up to be in my most vulnerable place, but there's like a safety of this is where I can be really super vulnerable. I feel the same way when I'm on stage. It's like I can be really vulnerable on stage and in public, and that feels really good. But Mm. it scares the crap out of me at times to be really vulnerable with someone intimately or in a small group of people. Right. And so what I've learned in my own journey along the way is this is my space. This is my, this is my sandbox. This is my playground to be really vulnerable. And each time I allow myself to do it is when I grow. Hmm. So I've given you lots of time now to think, but I know you're really listening to me. I (laughs) was listening to you. And I also was thinking of my answers. I think what makes me most nervous or insecure is do I have something to say that people want to hear, mm-hmm. number one. Mm-hmm. And number two, am I going to say the wrong thing mm-hmm. and regret it later or mm-hmm. appear stupid? Mm-hmm. That would be it. Yeah. And I think those are normal human emotions. Uh, here's what I will say after this is episode 211. After all these episodes, one thing I can say is nobody has ever said anything stupid that I, I mean, there may have been silly things that we've said, but I've never heard anybody say anything stupid. And every show, somebody has said something that I know someone somewhere benefits from. Even when I've had a couple of shows where I'm like, that was like the worst freaking one in the world. (laughs) When I allowed myself to actually, and I rarely go re-listen to them because now I have a team that does all that and they listen for anything that goes on or anything that needs to be edited out, which is rare even in that realm. But when I do take the chance to just go listen back to some of these, I always pick up something that I didn't even catch, even in the moment that we're talking, because I think it's so amazing that we'll have this conversation and there'll be something that happens and then we just keep moving on. And, and just the fact that you you know, admitted that you would be afraid of saying something wrong or not have something to deliver a value, I think those are two key principles to really truly coming out and living a life that's uncloseted and free is to realize you're going to make some mistakes. You're going to be vulnerable. You're going to say some wrong things, but regardless of what gets said, what needs to get said is probably the right thing that needs to be said in that moment. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I think. And I think that's part of what, you know, I'm picking up from you, Craig is that's part of what creating good mornings is really all about. You're being that vulnerable person. You're letting the people see, and you said it earlier, you know, people are seeing the real you and that's what's making it a success. And that's probably what's fueling the fire that, you know, hopefully one day that will be completely what you do and you get to just relish in it. Keep going, man. Thanks, Rick. So one last question before we wrap up, if you could give somebody, you know, a listener, a piece of advice right now about, you know, coming out or staying on the path or doing that thing, what would be that thing you would love to just leave the listeners with as we wrap up today? I'd say take baby steps Mm -hmm. and do what you can do today. You don't need to figure everything out. You don't need to have all the answers. And usually things will happen in a way that is completely different than what you expect. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. <laughs> I don't think too often, rarely does it actually happen exactly the way we think it's going to. And even when it does, sometimes that could be disappointing in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's really some good advice there. So, so if you all want to connect with Craig, his blog is creategoodmornings.com. That's a great place to catch him. He's also got a really cool free download there. It's Love Waking Up, Five Simple Strategies to Customize Your Morning Routine. And I would encourage each and every one of you to download that. Just check him out and see what he might be able to do to inspire you to live your life uncloseted and to truly create the good mornings for your life to send you down a path of happiness, fulfillment, and joy. Just want to say thanks, Craig, for being here, man. I'm so glad we connected. You did great. You didn't screw up. You didn't say anything stupid. I mean, even if you did, I wouldn't really give a fuck. So uh, thanks for showing up and being, you know, just being you, man. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate you having me. You bet. 
Yep, that's it. That means it's time to say goodbye to another episode of the Coming Out Lounge. I'm so glad you joined me. I'm Rick Clemens, Coming Out Coach, that guy who helps you simplify your life to make the big, bold moves you've got coming your way. And I want to say thank you for just listening, giving us ratings and reviews, wherever you give us ratings and reviews, for however you're sharing us with the world, because you know what? You're helping make the world a better place. Now, I also know that some of you that are listening are like, I need to make a move. I need to do something big. One of the best ways to make an immediate move is to go to thecomingoutlounge.com and look for the coaching button. Yeah, there's some little buttons on the show pages and on the homepage that talk about the coaching sessions that dive right in to start doing some coaching with me around specific subjects around coming out. I'd love to work with you on those. So go check that out. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, always, always reach out to us at 949-371-8559, 949-371-8559. Or you can also drop me a line at Rick at rickclemens.com and that is clemens c-l-e-m-o-n-s rick at rickclemens.com and i'd love to hear from you and chat back and forth about whatever's going on in your life but until then never stop stepping out stepping up and stepping into living your powerful truth because it's simple be bold to live life uncloseted take care everyone